now 90 runners getting ready to com compete in the 135 mile Badwater Ultra Marathon in Death Valley, California. That's going to happen today. Expected highs at the starting line hovering around 113 degrees. If you think that's rough, because it is, check this out. My next guest just accomplished a tremendous feat. It's called the 50-50-50 Challenge. And the man who pulled it off is known as the Iron Cowboy for good reason. James Lawrence of Utah just completed his 50th full-course Ironman over the weekend. 50 races in 50 states in 50 days. And that works out to a lot of miles swimming, 120 miles swimming, 5,600 miles biking, running 1,300 miles. Remember, there's a marathon in every Ironman that you do. He says he did it for his kids and to raise money for the Jamie Oliver Food Foundation, which provides people with better access to food education. And joining me now is the Iron Cowboy himself, James Lawrence. James, great to have you on the program. You have our full attention and admiration. Why, James? Why did you choose to do this? <laughs> You had to, that's a, one of the biggest questions. Um, you know, I hold two world records, and I wanted to find my mental, physical uh, limits. And uh, like you said, we also wanted to raise money for the Childhood Obesity and the Jamie Oliver Food Foundation. Did you find your limits during this? Yeah, we sure did, man. They, uh, we, we found my physical limits and uh, more my mental limits. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm most proud of is that we, uh, we as a crew and myself personally, we, we pushed through those. and. Uh, you know, it, the odds were stacked against us and not many thought we could do it, but we, uh, we persevered and pushed through all the way to the finish. Well, that's one of the questions that we had when we were first talking about this story yesterday is logistically, how did you pull it off? Yeah, that was one of the biggest uh, things that also people said was that, you know, we believe that you can do it physically and mentally, but we, we think you'll run into some out of control logistics that'll just completely shut you down. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and to me, that was just, you know, just a, a slight obstacle. If something came up to me, it was just a matter of finding a way around it or, or how to get through it. And uh, we started in uh, Hawaii and uh, went to Alaska, then Washington. And that was the hardest part was getting those, uh, those flights lined up. I got a, a total of seven and a half hours of sleep um, through the first three Ironmans uh, because of the international, or, or the, uh, sorry, the domestic travel. And, uh, and then, then to get from state to state every night, we would, uh, as soon as I'd finished the run, They'd uh, throw food at me and uh, throw me in the motorhome, and we'd travel through the night. Unbelievable. And your wife and your five kids were with you the entire time? Yeah, my wife and five kids were there. Um, they loved it. Uh, I mean, my wife worked really hard, but my kids <laughs> got to play. <laughs> my wife's a saint. Uh, yeah, the she kids is. Got to play. I have to say that, James. Yeah, I is. think she is, for real. <laughs> yeah, everybody told me how many levels I married up. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's but the way you the, should do the, it. The, yeah, but the kids, I mean, they had a blast. They got to sleep well all through the night, and they woke up the next day in every state and got to do whatever was fun. They got to see monuments, go to museums, parks. Um, they just had probably the best summer vacation they've ever had. So it, just so our viewers understand, when you were going to different states, you basically charted out your own Ironman. So there were points on the course where you might be alone, uh, but you invited some people to, to ride with you or to run with you, and at every race, you invited the community to come and join you. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that was one of the coolest things. Um, I, I ended up never being alone. Um, the, the, the communities across the United States just absolutely came out and overwhelmed us. Um, I had somebody with me in every swim, every bike, and then we had, uh, we ranged from 10 to a couple thousand people at, the, at every single one of the 5K runs we did at seven o'clock at night. And so it was one of the most important things we did and what I wanted to do was to bring the communities out um, and really empower people to uh, be active and uh, learn about what real food can do. Wow, it's, it's, really, it's really amazing. I was reading as I was wondering, you know, what's the biggest obstacle that you had to confront? I couldn't believe one story where you actually fell asleep on your bike. That must have been pretty scary. Yeah, um, I, was, I was experiencing such high fatigue um, and my body in those early, early weeks, uh, my body hadn't adjusted to just doing an Ironman every single day on four to five hours of sleep. And uh, in uh, Tennessee, it was about 106 degrees outside, and uh, you know, on, on those aero bikes, uh, you just kind of settle in. And uh, my heart rate was so low because I was just conditioned to, to do so. And uh, yeah, I fell asleep and found out that the asphalt's a horrible alarm clock. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but you, you actually finished this endeavor in pretty good shape, you say? 
Yeah, I was, I was shocked how my body and my mind adapted. Uh, my last 20 um, states that we went through, I actually got stronger. And uh, I posted my fastest time on the 50th Ironman here in Utah on Saturday. Wow. Uh, just quickly here as you wrap up, we, we, could, we could talk to you all day, James. But I'm thinking, what an amazing way to also see the country, uh, to be able to bike and run and, and swim across it. At the end of all of this, as you've had just a few days to reflect, you know, what's your biggest takeaway? Uh, man, that, you know, I, I jokingly say that there's no salary cap on life, and that's for professional sports. Um, and, and really, the, the mind and the body are, are unbelievable. And uh, just never doubt what you think is possible and never let anybody tell you what, what's possible. And just go out there and live your dreams and uh, just, just knock it way out of the park. Well, uh, James, <laughs> you have certainly given us a lot to think about. And as you say, not only to inspire people, but to empower them. So I uh, bet you empowered a few people today just listening to your story. And we look forward to having you back on the program. Say hello to the wife and the kids. And we wish you the best, James. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much.